this was pretty uh, interesting story um, in the news today. Uh, I think, uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Park. Uh, Park is the Palo Alto Research Center, but Park <laughs> it, it was uh, part of Xerox. You remember Xerox? Xerox, which today is, is owned by Fujifilm. Uh, Xerox used to be a, a major U.S. corporation. It set up the Palo Alto Research Center as a private uh, research lab, uh, like Bell Labs and like many other um, uh, labs that were affiliated with American business. Uh, Park w was one of the, one of the leading uh, research labs um, uh, in the world during its time. Indeed, you can go back... Um, uh, to, um, uh, to to 1940, where uh, as um, uh, well, no, this isn't wouldn't be 1940. But anyway, so so I'll get to, I'll get to 1940 in a minute. But anyway, Park uh, today uh, has been formally, um, in a sense, uh, uh, shut down or, or no, not really shut down, but it was it donated um, to SRI, SRI International, SRI. International stands for uh, uh, Silicon Silicon um, Research Institute. Um, uh, sorry, not Silicon. What am I talking about? Stanford Research Institute. But it, it changed its name at some point to SRI uh, to separate itself from Stanford itself. It is a private, uh, non-for-profit research laboratory, uh, and they do all kind of research. And um, it is it, it was originally. Um, it was originally, or, or the origins of SRI, were RCA uh, laboratories. So it used to be, in, in before government basically uh, started pouring gazillions of dollars into scientific research and into technological research and basically crowding out private capital, uh, most of the cutting-edge research in the United States, particularly ones that had real applications, were being done in, in, in private research labs. The most famous of them, of course, is Bell Labs, which was owned by AT&T. RCA Laboratories, which was owned by RCA, the, the, uh, the, the record label, the, the uh, transistor maker, the uh, radio station. Um, and uh, later that RCA became part of SRI. Anyway, in 1940, RCA Laboratories demonstrated the world's first commercial transmission uh, transmission electron microscope. This is just, just a few highlights from the history of SRI and uh, Park. Uh, in 1969, SRI, then associated with Stanford University, was involved in the first transmission on the OP, OPANET. OPANET was, of course, the first computer network, which served ultimately as the foundation uh, of the Internet. In 1973, Park created Park uh, that was owned at the time by Xerox, created the first personal workstation, really the first personal computer. I don't know if you guys knew this. Park created the first personal computer. In 1974, uh, the David, David Sarnoff Research Center, which was part of SRI, invented the amorphous solar silicon cell, which was the building block of solar technology. 1975, Park released the first graphical user interface, GUI, which contains icons and pop-up menus, and they can overlap and require point-and-click interaction, the foundation of how we use computers today. In 1988, Park coined the term ubiquitous computing, describing a future where mobile devices are connected through the Internet. Uh, Park has been a massive innovator in computers. SRI has been a massive innovator in a variety of different scientific uh, technological realms, uh, it, it, it's nice to see that Park wasn't just shut down, that it is being transferred and the buildings will be preserved by <coughs> SRI and research will continue in them. Um, famously, it was at uh, Park uh, that Steve Jobs first saw uh, that user interface of Windows, uh, icons, and, um, and a mouse. Uh, Park is where the mouse, the computer mouse, was invented. So, uh, you know, Steve Jobs basically uh, took that. I mean, one of the great failures of Xerox, and if you will, uh, one of the great corporate failures ever, uh, was that while Park innovated all these innovations, Xerox never benefited from them. That is, Xerox never invested in computers. 
uh, or when it, when it did finally, it was way too late. Never invested in um, commercializing all the inventions uh, being made uh, at Park. And it took Steve Jobs to uh, basically uh, figure it out, learn from it, and then apply it all uh, and, and uh, apply it into the first, uh, the first uh, uh, Apple computers. And certainly by the time of the Macintosh, the whole mouse uh, interface uh, was, was born and, and has come to dominate all computing, uh, all computing. So, uh, you know, a major American institution a testament to American innovation, American investment in science and technology, uh, and uh, a, a testament to the fact that great innovation and great investment in science is, does not, indeed should not happen at the government level, but these innovations are going to happen when you leave uh, the uh, entrepreneurs, individual entrepreneurs, and private companies to invest and do these things. And even even when something like Park is, is, is not capitalized on, as Xerox never really capitalized on Park to the extent that they could have, that, that knowledge is not lost. That knowledge is picked up by people like Steve Jobs, and then they utilize it. Uh, Xerox did not uh, uh, prohibit Apple from, from using its technology, <clears throat> and we're all massive beneficiaries, um, uh, beneficiaries of that. Um, so, so yes, uh, I think uh, an important day in the history of technology in the United States. And again, um, the more I read about the, uh, the, uh, these private labs, the more impressed I am. You know, Park today has, <clears throat> has about 1,000 employees. Uh, that All of those will join SRI and, and, and enhance the... Uh, um, research areas that SRI is involved in. Uh, some of those include computer vision, artificial intelligence, and machine, machine learning, and robotics. So, uh, uh, you know, this is a, these are spaces that uh, these companies, these entities, if you will, these research entities have been focused on for a long, long time. And it's, it's more proof, again, that uh, uh, you don't need government to generate uh, basic research uh, that leads to great technology breakthroughs. You can do it privately, and these companies have done it privately for a long time. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.